Okay. Now, for, so, yeah, I was sending you the link, and you were like, this ain't my gig. I don't know. Is that what was happening? Uh, no. Uh, I was on my phone uh, not realizing that uh, you wanted to uh, – uh, that, that the link that you had sent me was the one I needed to click okay, on. Okay, fine. No through, the, uh, through the browser plugin, I guess. I've never used this. Before. So, hopefully – this goes on YouTube or whatever. Facebook's easier, but we'll see if we can get the comments happening. Um, I like your scholarly background. I see your volumes and volumes because you're such an egghead. That's impressive. That's good. <laughs> I got the same thing. Sure. Um, well, anyway, so uh, uh, I used to, I've always thought something was a little fishy with NFP, you know, and I was trying to figure it out and uh, whatever. Cause when I first got married, I did all I know is, I heard about it a little bit, but I didn't know anything about it or what, if you're supposed to use it or what all. Right. Yeah. And then I, then eventually I learned that it was, it's for, it has to be mutually agreed upon, mm-hmm. et cetera. Okay. And then I was kind of debating with this guy on Facebook um, about it. And he says, no, you can never use it because it's he, because it's against the primary purpose. Of marriage, so it can, and I'm like, whoa, dude, that's too weird because the church allows it for certain occasions. You know what I mean? Like if it's uh, whatever um, grave cause or serious reason and all that stuff, the church allows it. So I'm thinking uh, here. Let me try to let me see. We'll go like that. Okay. Right. So the church allows it, uh, and I'm thinking, fine. What's the answer? And then I started reading into it. And then it started to click once I read Casty Canubi more because I was going over that paragraph fifty nine, right? And sure. then it, and then it, I finally it started to click. I'm like, now I'm catching on. Marriage is about babies, and you can't work around it. And so then I thought, this is it. And then I um, ran it past another priest I know, and and he kind of got the light come on too. Father Kopsinski, you ever heard of that guy? Uh, not that I can think of, no. He does. A, he's on um, Census Fidelium. Okay. Frequently. Okay. Sure. Um, so I'm a Novus Ordo Catholic. And then, so during the week is just Novus Ordo. And then Fridays we do Latin Mass and Sundays Latin, or FSSP. What about you? Uh, I, just, just so we're clear, is that currently or was that back when you discovered all of this? Right now. I've right always now. been a Nova Sordo guy. Then when FSSP came to town and I went one time, game <laughs> over. Yeah, I was like, well, I am not going back to, uh, you know, all are welcome. I, I play drums. So I used to come home after mass and because um, um, I had all those groovy beats in my head, right, from <laughs> Nova Sordo. Uh, at any rate, that's kind of what I, because so, yes, you will, you know, a broken clock is right twice a day. So... It's, you can meet a set of a contest or a St. Pius the fifth guy or whatever, who's not all wrong. So, mm-hmm. but people who say stuff I'm saying aren't Nova Sordo people. They're just not. So uh, right quick, what's your life story in 10 seconds? <laughs> in 10 seconds. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, uh, the quick version is uh, I became a so-called traditionalist, if you want to call me that, although I despise the term uh, when I was, 12. Um, and uh, pretty much since then, I've just gone to the old mass. Uh, I mean, we do the Byzantine liturgy uh, semi-frequently. Um, we'll do Melkite here and there uh, when it's available. Um, I've been to the Novus Ordo since I was 12, but not very often. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I yeah, mean, so, it, and Pope Francis is the Pope, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for better or worse. Uh, yeah. 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 And so there's, that's a jumping off point. I mean, because sure. he's, he, he said stuff and you're like, nah, nah. Right. And same with uh, a Pope Benedict is way better, but, and then I was reading, you read more stuff about John Paul II. It's like, Whoa, sure. That's, that's just got some weird stuff back there. Sure. And, you know, and, and, and Taylor Marshall talked about an infiltration. I think it goes all the way back to, to Pius the 12th, you know, sure. with the, gotten rid of the, the, the 50, 55 mass, Easter mass and all that. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. So tell me why. So basically it kind of comes down to this primary purpose of NFP stuff. And I'm saying you got to be open to life and that has a definition. Mm -hmm. And that means you can't be avoiding life. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you could say, you know, a vasectomy is open to life or the pill is open to life because if, if there was a baby, we would welcome the baby with open arms, but we're, you know what I'm saying? So why is, why is, you're telling me I'm wrong because you know NFP is open to life 24-7, right? Uh, so it, do you want me to respond now? Or Why not? We, okay, I'm just not sure how we're going to format this. I don't uh, know anything, man. Sure. I'm, just, I'm a blue-collar dude. Sure. Uh, do, do you mind if we start with a prayer? Is that okay? Sure. All right. We don't have to do this every time, but I figure we've never done this before, so why not? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Ghost didst instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for, pray us. for us. Our Lady Seat of Wisdom, pray for, pray us. for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right. So, uh, I, I wasn't, you, you know, again, we didn't really discuss formatting, which is okay. I kind of like off the cuff stuff. So I'm glad that you kind of let us in. And then when we started, I wanted I was to looking for anyone to talk to because when you get in front of the camera and you have to go monologue, it's not easy because you're like, yeah. you are so boring, dude. And absolutely, so you got to come up with something. So, but you're the only one who actually keeps saying stuff back because I'm looking <laughs> for anyone. And I don't, I get so many people knocking Facebook. I like it because if you're wrong, you cannot hide. Right. You're going to get shot down. You're going to, right. so, you got to be able to back up what you're saying and you can slow down and go, no, no, no. So you, the, I think the, again, t by way of analogy, you can talk about evolution, mm -hmm. you know, all this scientific evidence and all this scientific evidence. And you can have, a, you can have piles of conversations about it, but the bottom line is what does the Bible say? And what does the church say about what the Bible says? And that settles right. it for Catholics. Right. What does the church say about NF at primary purpose? Sure. And that settles it. Sure. It doesn't matter what Pope says what, as long as the primary purpose, it's like, I don't, the Pope can say two plus two equals five. It doesn't change it. So mm -hmm. that's why I say you can give lip service to the hierarchy of ends, but you got to actually do it. That's why I use the analogy of the, the pro-life abortionist. I'm pro-life. See, doesn't, sure. doesn't make sense. So, and it, it, hold on one second. It appears that all of a sudden my computer is, uh, I'm not, is the audio and the video synced at all? Perfect, you, dude. You, you're like, yeah. Okay. It looks horrible on my end all of a sudden. I'll, I'll just start. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, if you go back to the Old Testament, uh, I was doing this a little earlier today. If you go back to the Old Testament and look in the Jewish laws, uh, they say nothing about this. They say nothing about abstaining and not abstaining for, for the purposes of reproduction. Uh, there's nothing there. Uh, God was in direct communication with several of the prophets. There's nothing there. They talk about who you can't have relations with and um, that abortion is a grave evil. I, you know, these are things that have been discussed throughout the centuries. Uh, you find them in the church fathers. You find them in uh, the moral theology manuals. Um, these themes repeat over and over and over. What you don't find is discussions about, well, you have to do something at this point and you don't have to do something at this point. Uh, and of course, I'm talking about the marital act. There is no imperative from the church or in the Old Testament that speaks to any of this. Um, and so, so it's not a matter of, so my position would be, it's not a matter of natural law. It's not, and we'll cover increase and multiply in Genesis. We will cover that, Genesis 128, I believe. Um, we'll get there. Um, but there is no divine imperative to what? To, to reproduce all the time. Of course, or, not all the time, but you can't. But, 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 the, the, to, sorry, I no, just to, to keep it simple, I again, I like I said, I, I you can you can produce miles of argument, but it's, 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 it comes down to is NFP open to life. And I say it's not, and you say it is. Okay. Right? If that's where, okay. 
I mean, I can skip right to this part that's if you want. Enough. That's it, right it's there. Important. But it is important it, in my mind if, to start with the Old Testament and work our way through. But if we want to go right to, is it open to life or not? Because, yes, yes the, the faith is simple. You don't have to be a brainiac. It's like, here no. it is. No, that's fine. But it is important to be grounded. Now, that said, I'm happy to do it your way, too. So is it open to life? Yes, it is. Okay. Is contraception open to life? No. Why, okay, so if there's a, quote, 2% chance of a baby being produced with contraception, and there's a similar, or if the if the NFP chance of a baby is also similar, why is one open to life and one is not open to life? In the case of artificial contraception, you're doing something to deliberately frustrate the act. You're not doing that in NFP. Okay, fine. But the purpose of NFP is to not have a baby, isn't it? The purpose of NFP is to attempt to not have a baby. However, if, uh, and I was actually reading this uh, today, I'll reference it if it becomes necessary, but uh, I was reading today that uh, if you are practicing NFP, you can know if you have a truly contraceptive mindset, if you can picture, okay, what if our attempt to avoid fails, where are we going to fall? Are we going to be in a situation where we're now deeply regretting the fact that we cooperated with God in a procreative act and produced a child? That would be a problem. That would be a contraceptive mentality. And that's you can a no. have a contraceptive mentality, but it's like I said, you can the abortionist can have a pro-life mentality, but he's still killing babies. So it doesn't matter what his mentality is. It, um, can you I'm not sure that the analogy is works but what do you mean it you, means I don't recall you can your talk record. about what's between your ears all day long but what happens in reality matters mm -hmm. and we're talking so the act is to produce babies not to avoid babies that's what the act is for nfp is for it, it is the nfp is for marriage without babies and i i, I and i would deny that Okay, uh, well, it's just, it's just, it's like, wait a minute. If you put a big engine in a car, it's to go fast. You can deny that, but that's what it's for. Sure. So here's the thing you can abuse. So NFP is objectively, it's an object. It's not objectively good or objectively bad. I don't think you're going to say it's intrinsically it's objectively bad. It's a grave sin every time you use it. That's my point. Okay, so then we're going to... And you're saying you have to have a serious reason to use it? Is that your, what you're saying? There has to be there has to be proportionate reason with how long you're going to use it and if you're going to use it at all. There's many things that come into play. Okay, has the teaching of the... Okay, so was the teaching on NFP identical in 1900 to what it is right now? Was the teaching on NFP identical in 1900 to what it is right now? Uh, in an official sense, sure. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So, um, therefore, when when Pius XII and midwife said you can use a little NFP, that was not groundbreaking at all. He was already repeating church teaching, right? Uh, absolutely. Okay. I disagree. And here's why. Because for the first time in the history of Christianity, the Lambeth Conference, the Anglicans in 1930 said procreation is not primary. Mm -hmm. And then you had all these Catholic authors like like Ford and Kelly, and I'm forgetting the other dude's name. Uh, I'm forgetting right now. But anyway, they started to, because no one just likes, Catholics have to have babies and we don't care what you feel like. And so we wanted to, love was in the air, dude. So they're starting to, they're starting to go, okay, look at this quote, Catholic birth control stuff, sure. which is what they, okay. What I'm saying is that, that then Casti Canubi comes out and says, no. You, the primary purpose must, the, the secondary purposes are okay to think about, but they have to be subordinate to the primary purpose. Sure. And if that means that you have to be, you cannot avoid babies mm -hmm. because it's, it's like I'm eating lunch, but I have to fast at the same time. So I'm going to eat lunch and throw up because I'm fasting. I'm open to nutrition. I'm just, <laughs> no, you either fast or you eat, but you don't eat and throw up. So sure. if you're going to do the marriage act, 
you keep procreation primary mm -hmm. or you don't do the act. That's what he's saying. What mm -hmm. does otherwise, like I say, what is the what is the point of the act if you are avoiding a baby? Some of the secondary purposes. Okay, but those but what why would you, how what justifies making the secondary purposes the main reason? So I would, there's a lot of distinctions we haven't made that are absolutely necessary. It is absolutely essential in this conversation to frame the fact that uh, when you have secondary ends that are not, uh, you know, where there is no issue, you can consider those ends and you're not, uh, you're, you're not turning the thing on its head. You're simply considering those ends. It, okay, it like I said, uh, sorry. It doesn't mean you're you're getting rid of the primary purpose. As a matter of fact, and and the, real okay, quick. Okay, whoa, you're get you're not getting rid of the primary purpose by getting rid of the primary purpose. But but you're not getting rid of it in the sense that you're not impeding God from doing what it is He's going to do. In the same way you would with artificial means. So, for, for example, we talk about how NFP is 98% effective or 96 or 99. You see all kinds of numbers on this. It doesn't matter. There are other days in the cycle where it's 5%, 8%, 10%. What if you, you know, what if you don't use NFP and just occasionally abstain on the major days and then not on the other, you know, it, it, that's the thing. There is no guidance from the church on this. On the guidance from the church is you have to keep the secondary purposes subordinate. That's what, and everything else is forbidden. Otherwise, it's intrinsically vicious. It's you can't do that. So, and how would somebody how how would somebody make not keep the secondary purposes subordinate? How does that happen? How so how do you not keep the secondary purposes subordinate? Uh -huh. sure. If you enter, let's say you enter into a marriage with the intention of not having children, or you have one child and then you're, you know, I'm just going to make up a scenario here. You have a child and you're 26 and you say, well, you know, I don't really want another one until I'm 35 and then maybe we'll consider it if, if ever. That's, we've talked about this on Facebook, but for the benefit of listeners, that's where you get into a matter of justice which is what my argumentation has been all this time is if there's a sin here, if there is one, it's one against justice, not against purity. Or okay. Not against so yeah, people. justice is the marriage act and be fruitful and multiply. So if you're going to get married, you better be fruitful and multiply. So God says, I'm going to give you right. the means, but you cannot abuse it. And so That's right. if, okay, so the, the, if if you if the secondary ends can never be a main reason for the act, yeah, and, this, no, and yeah, I, I would disagree with that. And and again, we wait I, a minute, wait a minute, wait. Sure, you can't disagree with that because but, but, they but, but, must be subordinate. Sure, they have to be subordinate. So mm -hmm. how do you how do you keep procreation? primary in the act while per not pursuing procreation all all you have to do is leave the intrinsic nature of the act intact okay that's okay wait 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 Th then but you are if you're if you're saying you're leaving the intrinsic in other words no contraception so you're just okay. being natural quote unquote uh, number one, it's not natural to avoid pregnancy. It's not natural to avoid fertilization, but or to avoid babies. Anyway, you, how should I put it? You're, 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 uh, you're pursuing those secondary ends, like I said, ahead of the primary, even no matter what's in your mind. So this is kind of what I keep getting back, and then I, and then I can't get the answer. What, what you're, you're. If you're primarily pursuing secondary ends, how is that primarily pursuing the primary end? Because you aren't using contraception, that's your answer? So, yes. 
However, I, I, I think you're overthinking this. Um, the moral theologians- <laughs> I think you're overthinking it, go no, ahead. No, I'm not. Uh, the, the moral theologians who have discussed this have talked about how you can even have a, this is tough to imagine, you can even have a purely lustful encounter. And they talk about how that's- Venial sin. Venial, yes. Right, because you're, but you're still not avoiding fertility. So you have to have the correct mindset because you have to justify what you're doing. Otherwise, it's it's like St. Thomas Aquinas says, it's baby's number one. Otherwise, you got to justify the act by being open to life. So, so you, you, it's, it's, it's the, if you're pursuing per fertility, you are putting the primary purpose number one. You would agree with that? Oh, well, of course. Okay. If you're pursuing fertility, you're putting the primary purpose number one. If you're not pursuing fertility, you're still putting you're still putting the primary purpose number one. That's what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's like you're 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 a two plus two equals five territory. So no, see, I'm not because you uh, uh, you know again here. Let me see if I can find this quote. They I'll, I'll try to find it while I'm chatting here. Uh, they the theologians discuss how the intention doesn't always have to be at the forefront of the mind and in real life without getting into too much detail, real life is messy. I'm sure we can all read between the doesn't lines. It doesn't matter what your intention is. No, when no. you're killing a baby in an abortion, it doesn't matter what your intention is. So in moral theology, intention is everything, but all I'm doing is responding to what you said about intention. We're talking but about not in, yeah, okay, um, maybe in, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. In moral yeah. theology, but not, but in, in, that's like if you're trying to, you know, private, uh, you know, sin or whatever. But, you were going to read me something, were you? I, I'm still looking for it. All right. So, the point is, though, you're the so, one talking about primary and secondary purposes and intentions. So, all I was doing was responding using your language. Okay. So that's all I was doing. All right. So, so, yeah. so your, your position, you're saying that as long as there's no artificial means, mm -hmm. everything is prime, every act is putting the primary purpose. In the correct position. Every act has the primary purpose on the table because by its very nature, it's open to life. This is true for infertile couples. It's true for elderly couples. It, it's open. It, all right. So, so why, why is contraception not open to life? Because you're deliberately frustrating the nature of the act. Okay. But it is there's still a chance a baby could happen with contraception. Absolutely. Yes, yes, there so is. So wouldn't you be open to life using just by that percentage, that small percentage, you're open to life? Absolutely. So you're not, but you just said you're not open to life with contraception. That's why I use the analogy of the abortionist. He's like, you know, I'm pro-life and I'm open to live babies because one in a thousand abortions survives. So I'm pro-life. I'm open to life. Mm -hmm. It's in my mind. It's in my heart. I'm very open to life. I love babies, but I'm, you know, I, people need their babies killed. So that's what I do, but I am open to life. It's like, no, dude, who, who are you to judge my mind? I'm not sinning. I'm open to life. Okay. <clears throat> There's blood all over the floor. That's the problem. So when you are physically avoiding the primary purpose by avoiding fertility, while not you just using a different method, you're not using any, like I said, you can shoot somebody in the head or you can starve them to death naturally. They sure. both have a dead person in the end. Sure. John, the, the, again, the concern here, if you're going to sin using NFP, the concern is justice over time for failing to increase and multiply. The act isn't considered because there is no action. That's what NFP is. It deals with a non-action. In in the non-action. Okay, okay. No, no, no. It that, the the then there, you should pay zero attention to fertility or calendar. Don't take any act. In other words, it is an action, and the action is we avoid fertility, which is not natural. No other species of animals avoids fertility because that's the prime. You know, that's the so it's not natural to do it. And it's also true that no other species can intentionally uh, procreate and understand the immortal destiny of their offspring. And so every time you procreate a 
uh, properly formed Catholic conscience would be considering if they can adequately provide for the immortal soul that they're going to produce. Uh, yes, okay, and that's, I don't, and I don't that's right. Because I know everybody talks about finances. I'm going way past finances here. I'm talking about yeah, okay, how so, to raise the child in general. Okay. All right. That's very important to consider. You, you can't not consider that. So we have, we are the only species that can do that. So, and, 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 you know, and God doesn't do anything frivolously. He didn't give us this faculty to intelligently reproduce for no reason. Now, that doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean go and contracept. It means that God-fearing, um, properly formed Catholic consciences can and should reproduce in a manner that, uh, where, where they can render their children to God appropriately and be able to say at their judgment, yeah, you know, I did everything I could for every one of my children and, and they were conceived intelligently, you know, okay. With, it's, this, okay. It's just so obvious to me. Once I figured this out, that there's two pieces that had to get figured out. First is this grave cause thing, because mm -hmm. I'm arguing with this dude on Facebook a year and a half ago, and he says, you can never do NFP. I'm like, no, yes, you can, because the church says you can. So we, that doesn't compute. That's right. So what I realized was what we had was what we had was grave cause creep. Changing the definition of grave cause. We put we took the sticker of grave cause of sin and put it on grave cause of baby. That's what happened. Because and, you know, and I and I would agree with you there. And by the way, can you go find the old John? Where's that guy? Bring, bring I want to talk to that guy. I want to talk to the guy who used to make the argument that I'm making. He's he's got it right. So I so I know you know how this works. I mean, you're you're you say it's you like so position, you got that's it. That's they said, it. hey, you, you know, you leave people alone who are who are making use of the fertile times. And that right. was making that use was of the infertile times. Infertile yeah. times. Right. Because it was to it was to avoid like if because let's say you you can't have a baby for some reason because because Hitler's in town or whatever. Yeah, aliens have landed, whatever. Yeah. And Here. so but your spouse is like I ain't ha this ain't this ain't working for me. Right. So you have the grace of marriage to do to do complete abstinence. The marriage provides the grace. But if you're not cooperating with grace or whatever, a spouse can reluctantly allow that sin. So there, there is no sin there. Wait there, a minute. There. Okay, yeah. You know what Cassie Kenubi says that's a sin to allow that because a, in a perversion of the right order. No, now, no, 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 no. Okay, Casti Kanubi 59. Now, now I, I want you to continue. I'm not trying to interrupt here. It's but a, that's the perversion of the right order. Now, order it's means order. Very... Order means one, two, three. That's right. what it means. That's okay. right. So number we, one is procreation. And we know that that's not what that means. No, Cassie we Kenubi don't know. Referring to modernism. Spinning against me, the woman. Now, pardon me. It's not that we don't know. It's that modernism has redefined it after Pius XII. Just like we now say the definition of marriage includes the bottom conjugum, which it doesn't. And it, it, you're right. It does not. Um, well, that, it, it does not, strictly speaking. You can it explain. It doesn't in essence. Okay. So at any rate, the perversion of the right order is if you take something and stand it on its head, you mm -hmm. have perverted the order. So... The only reason for the act is to produce babies. That's the re primary reason for the act. If you're not producing babies, stay away from you, you. If you're trying to avoid the primary purpose, don't do the act. Now, and but if your spouse can't handle that, you, you're allowed to reluctantly tell them there's, this is a perversion of the right order. But we're going to allow some of that. And that was your, just a minute, that's your grave cause. Now, what's happened is they have they have moved the definition of grave cause to include, they've said that's a grave cause to not have a baby, not just to avoid the sin. Mm -hmm. And and again, the it all boils down to what, what does keeping primary primary mean? And we fundamentally disagree and we cannot disagree as Catholics. Keeping primary primary means not avoiding procreation. And you say keeping primary primary means not just no contraception. Th those, th you see what I'm saying? Our definition of primary is different. Sure. So, so 
mine is more nuanced. My position is more nuanced. It's you have to be open to life in the justice sense of the term that you're going to answer for before God over time. And so you got to be physically. It's like it's like nuts and bolts. It's like the pro-abortion, pro-life abortionist saying, "I'm I'm in justice over time, open to life." It's like, dude, you can't kill babies. I don't care what you're thinking. You can't kill babies. So I don't care what's in your brain. You can't avoid fertility and do the act Mm -hmm. without being a perversion of the right order. Procreation's number one, and it has to be above the secondary purposes. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Cassidy Kenobi 59, because this seems to be a big bone of contention here. So uh, real quick, just permit me to, all I'm going to do here is quote Pius XI. Holy Church knows well that not infrequently one of the parties is sinned against rather than sinning, when for a grave cause he or she reluctantly allows the perversion of the right order. In such a case, there is no sin provided that, mindful of the law of charity, he or she does not neglect to dis, uh, to seek to dissuade and to deter the partner from sin. Nor are, the, this is the important part where we continue here with the quote, nor are those considered acting against nature who in the married state use their right in the proper manner, although on account of natural se- uh, natural reasons, either of time or of certain defects, new life cannot be brought forth. For in matrimony, as, we, as well as in the use of the matrimonial... Right, you're reading too much. I know. You have to pick so, a bite size. Well, yes, but this is very important because every time we talk about 59, you only want to talk about the first part. You have no, to I don't. But if you paragraph. read the whole paragraph, it's... go. The- the whole paragraph is what he said. He said the whole paragraph, not just the first part. Um, so you've got to consider the whole thing. And then his apostolic penitentiary, and we we discussed this, his apostolic penitentiary responded to a dubium about this and said that he was saying it is okay to, uh, that, that that is what he was referring to, is avoiding a fertile window or a more of a fertile window or less fertile window. Again, that's the thing here. We're, we're not dealing in absolutes. It's not a guarantee. Oh, if we do this, we're going to, you know. Okay. So, so you just read the entire 59 paragraph. Almost. And now, and now you're saying that there was a dubium about paragraph 59 after 19, 1930. Yeah. Is that right? There was a dubium about Casti Canubi and what it taught. Uh-huh as was their uh, previous questions that you referenced in 1853 and I think 1880 okay. uh, that the apostolic penitentiary also uh, gave answers to these questions on. And that was under three different popes. And then you may have seen that I referenced in our conversation six popes total. What I was doing there is saying, okay, you had three before Pius Twelfth, who explicitly uh, had this happen in their papacies through their apostolic penitentiaries. And you had three who as far as I know, didn't have the penitentiary or anything else respond, but they let those things remain on the books. And those would, of course, be Benedict XV, Pius X. You're you're saying a ton of stuff, but I, but, but I'm not. It's all, it's all important. Go ahead. Look, man, it, it, if, if you just read the 59 in three chunks, you can get it. Okay. But the problem is everyone else who reads 59, including all the moral theologians who spoke on it between now or between then and 1958, and I'm cutting off at Pius XII because you have a different conversation about him. uh, They all agree with me. You can't find any who have your interpretation of it. There's not one. Yes. uh, They. There isn't one. Um. The uh, NFP is wildly popular, just like annulments. And yes. if you talk to any tribunal today, they'll all say the bottom conjugum is essential to consent, which is, which is, it's heresy. It's not. Every single tribunal will tell you that. Okay. And, and, and that's a conversation for another day. And I want to have but that. The point is, is that just because everyone says it. Um, so, Okay, and that's, so why, we, that's why I'm drawing out before Pius the Twelfth, John. That, that, I'm, I'm, I agree with you that something happened somewhere along the way here, which is but, why I'm talking okay, about so, 1958 only. So 59, if you don't read it in pieces, if you just read the whole thing, you can kind of get you. You got to again. A lot of some stuff that's written sometimes can be taken more than one way, but you have to get it right. And the the key thing, like I said, is the primary end cannot be eclipsed by the secondary end. 
I would agree with you. So you are not open to life if you are avoiding life and you say you are. That's why I'm saying you're two plus two equals five because you're justifying this NFP, which did not exist before Pius the 12th. It was always just to avoid sin. And that's it because I asked that question straightforward. What if you're not pursuing the primary end? What are you pursuing? And you're saying the secondary. Okay, you're just admitting it's not subordinated. No, that that, that doesn't mean it's not subordinated. You're still you're still you still have the intrinsic nature of the act, which explicitly recon, uh, recognizes the procreative power. Okay, there's no procreative power if you're avoiding fertility. John, at some point, you're going to deny the marital act to uh, infertile couples. No, no, no. Infertile couples don't avoid fertility. If it is, okay, so 100 years ago, we can say that they're not avoiding fertility and there might be a shot at this. Today, we can get pretty darn down to the nitty gritty and say these people cannot reproduce, period. And so while they may not be avoiding fertility, it's essentially... Um, it, the ends are going to end up completely jacked up if we take your line of reasoning. The, the, it's just, it's never going to be about procreation. It's never going to be on the front what of their you mind. I, you're, you're losing me, man. So, so if you have a doctor with a biological reason and he goes to the couple and says, look, for this reason, you know, you have no ovaries or, you know, whatever, you know, he tells the woman, look, there is zero chance. Yeah. Procreation is not on their mind. Fine. Fine. But, but you, you, okay, you ha- a you have to have it on your mind because of venial sin. If you don't, number two, God can make water flow out of a rock, so God can do whatever. He can yes. make blind people see. Yes, He can. But you have to open your eyes. So the, the again the you cannot pursue the secondary ends without pursuing the primary end. And you're telling me. It's impossible to not pursue the primary end. And I'm saying, no, man, NFP is elevating secondary above primary because you are avoiding the primary purpose of the act. You are saying we're trying to not get pregnant, but we're doing the act, which gets us pregnant. Mm-hmm. And that's what Cassie can is saying. You that's forbidden. And. It's when I, as soon as I saw that, and then I said, okay, the grave cause question was about the sin, not about if you don't, not grave cause for no baby. It's grave cause in addition to. Can you, can you, t- just so I can follow along with you on that, can you tell me exactly what you're talking about there? That grave cause thing? Yes, yes. Please. Just like I kept showing that picture of Cardinal sure. Hayes in 1920. For sure. And if you do some reading about the history of NFP and contraception in the country, they talk all this, when this NFP stuff started getting out of the box, like in 1915 and all that, they were like, whoa, 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 no one talk about this. Uh, uh-uh. Okay. It is to be used as a last resort. If you are, ha- if you're totally abstaining, but your spouse can't deal with that and your spouse is going to commit adultery or, onanism or something not cool you are you're reluctantly permitted like it says in Cassie Canubi 59 to allow this to happen while trying to dissuade the your, your sinful spouse don't do this this is a perversion of the right order you are pursuing something other than a baby with the action which you cannot do and then since we were on 59 and then, and so it says, in such a case, there is no sin. In other words, if you're the innocent spouse, Hitler is in town, you're telling your husband, not now, and he's saying, I can't handle it. You're allowed to do the, you're allowed to do the perversion of the right order. That's what it says. And as long as you try to tell him, let's not do this. Um, okay. And then for your next point, it says, okay, part two of 59, nor are those considered as acting against nature who in their married state use the right for power man on a kind of natural reasons, like they're naturally sterile or or either of time or, uh, or certain defects. So time, they are, you know, menopause or past, certain defect, naturally sterile. Right. New life cannot be brought forth. Okay, so 
it it's packs a lot in here, but it's oh, addressing it different things. So then they they finish it up, and then I'll be done talking here. That's that cool. you you can consider the secondary ends, but you've got to be open to life and not figuratively, spiritually, or attitudinally, but physically open to life. And that means physically not avoiding physically what happens when physical babies are produced, which means you, you're not avoiding fertility. So, so that's why there were always big families once upon a time. And there was, you, you, you just relied on grace and it was total abstinence. Now with all this NFP, the Catholic family is, is cut in by 60% or whatever. Obviously something radical changed and it wasn't this way. Otherwise we would have families with two kids and three kids back in 1900. Uh-uh. So, but the, like I said, the, the key thing is how is procreation primary when you're pursue when you're doing the act primarily for reasons other than procreation? And you're just saying as long as, as long as the intrinsic, as long as it's quote all natural, that's all that matters. That's what you're saying. Sort of. So it depends on your situation. If you do not have a cause to be on NFP, and I'm not going to use the adjective, you know, grave, serious, people use different adjectives. We're, I'm just going to say, if you don't have adequate cause, then you can't yeah. do it. If you now, don't have adequate cause, you can't do it. That's right. You can't, okay. you can't use so what just if, So this is what justifies adequate cause is your spouse is going to sin, but that got changed that got changed in 1951 to if you can't have a baby. So this is the adequate cause thing. They changed the label. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm shaking my head about your interpretation there of Cassidy Kenobi 59. So what he's referring to there is not if you can make it or can't make it through an NFP cycle. It's referring to onanism. If your spouse is going to sin uh, or, or, or onanism or... Uh, uh, Onanism broadly is anything other than the normal marriage act. So the uh, so the apostolic penitentiary responded and referenced the 1880 response and the 1853 response in their 1930, I think it was 1933 response. They, right. the so they double down. It's the same thing. You leave people alone who are who are who are operating outside of the fertile window. You don't you don't you don't judge what they're doing. That, that, right? yes, that is correct. Okay. So, right. and I'm sorry, by the way, by the way, let me just apologize real quick. If I'm giving thumbs up, that's because I'm so used to doing that. Uh, all right. So, the, listen. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. We have masks on all day. So, I give thumbs up all the time when I'm trying to make a point. I'm oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I hate well, it, but I'm used to that. Now. I'm I'm a self employed blue collar <laughs> dude and I don't wear masks ever. And I like to, I like to interrogate people that come to my house with their mask on. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm not, I usually I'm, ask them if they're a doctor, <laughs> and I've, I got all kinds of things. That, but anyway, sure. Sorry, uh, I, I just want to make sure you know I'm not. You know, so not giving those things up. the oh, the not intentionally. you can again. We can't judge what's going on with spouses. That's right, and that's their point. But what's changed is the grave cause subject. The grave cost used to be and has traditionally always been if there's a chance of sin, that's for grave cause. In other words, if your spouse is going to commit adultery, you're allowed a little NFP in that case. Wait. Then it got changed to no, the grave cause is if you can't have a baby right now. And now we're violating what's always been taught, which is procreation primary, literally, physically not just attitudinally or spiritually you it, it, like i said it, it, it doesn't matter how it, physical stuff matters you can't avoid fertility if you're going in other words you can't do the baby making act if you're not trying to make a baby period go ahead i'm sorry i'm sorry you can't you <laughs> can't you admit you Otherwise, you are out of order. You you are not making the primary purpose subordinate. You're doing the baby making act. You're avoiding a baby. Wrong 
you're it's so obvious it's okay it doesn't it's not rocket science and it's not nuanced it's straight up the middle and it's super politically incorrect and that's why no one can believe it but so, oh go ahead i'm sorry go ahead so so that when i once i started going because i always knew something was fishy i'm like how come there's so much nfp now what's the deal and i started figuring it out and then the last piece came when i started researching the early 20th century, they were like, no, the serious cause is to avoid sin. I'm like, okay, now it makes sense. Now Cassie Kanubi is cleared up. Mm -hmm. And that's why that Cardinal Hayes said what he said, plus a whole bunch of, uh, that's what they all said. But when you, and like, we know the church can be wrong, or not the church, but the popes, individual popes can say stuff that's wrong. When you start letting NFP out of the bag, it's like a forest fire. You can't put it back. It's well, worse course, than free wealth. It's welfare, you know. Huh? Well, of course, the devil's going to be all over uh, any kind of uh, licentiousness with its good. That that, that 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 we can we can have our cake and eat it too. Everybody wants divorce and contraception. Everybody, and we don't have it in the church. So instead, we have NFP and annulment. Mm -hmm. It's the same stuff, a little different flavor. That's all it is. If you have primary. Number one, annulment goes away, NFP goes away. But when I say annulment, I mean Bonham Conyngham annulments, the McNulments, meaning the the I don't I'm not feeling it type stuff. Right. Yeah. So so what my conclusion is even though people pay lip service to the primary purpose, they do the opposite, which is why I use the analogy of the pro-life abortionist. I'm pro-life, but I kill babies. Uh, give me, give me a second here. As a matter of fact, uh, hold, hold on one second. Someone just walked in. Uh, All right. <laughs> give me just a second. I'm okay. Sure I can pause. Is there a way to pause this? Just walk away. So uh, you're the one of your kids walked, walked up. Okay. Give me one second. Sorry. Okay. Fine. There we go. No there problem, we go. buddy. We're good. We're good. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll okay. Be, we'll be good. So, all right. So, just tonight. Now you mentioned, uh, in conclusion, I hope we're not concluding cause I haven't said much yet. <laughs> Um, so I hope we're not wrapping up. Uh, is that okay? If we can go ahead. Okay, great. So, you know, I, I would say, I mean, gosh, there's so many things to address. Um, first you have the real problem that the penitentiaries told these people that they should be, or told confessors that they should leave these people alone. The people, not a problem. the people in question were people that were avoiding fertile windows using what was at the time rhythm, which is nowhere near as sophisticated as NFP. Um, and they were told, leave these people alone. Um, you know, that's a real problem. If we're going to say that that is intrinsically evil. Uh, it's not a problem in here. I'll explain it to you really. It's super not, there's no problem with it. You don't judge if somebody is deciding to make use of the infertile window because their partner, their spouse may be, it, it could to save them from sin. You we can't you can't judge what's going on inside the marriage. Okay. So I would but disagree. I would disagree. It's the confessor's obligation to the if confessor he, can judge, he but going on, he has to uh he has to investigate. Okay. So so but I'm saying publicly is what they're saying. We can't if if you're if you know somebody if 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 somebody is making use of the infertile time we can't publicly judge what or tell them what they're doing is wrong because we don't know what the cause is. I mean, there's no way to publicly know that they're doing that anyway. So that's what that's about. You are okay. supposed to talk to your confessor about stuff, mm -hmm. but, and, and it, lots has been written over the last 200 years about how you are supposed to work through your confessor on this grave cause business. Sure. But it's not a problem because the reason to, the only reason infertile window is permitted is to is to keep your spouse from sin yeah and and i flatly deny that uh and i use casti kanubi 59 to flatly deny it he is speaking about spouses who are going to frustrate the intrinsic nature of the act that's what he's talking about there. And that's been confirmed by all the theologians who have commented on that paragraph. I, I, I mean, there is no other way to read it. 
That's what they've all said he said, and he knew that they said that. Okay, is, so, so hold, on, no, hold on real quick, real quick. It's very important to understand. We don't live in this world anymore. You might know this. Many people listening may not. In 1930, okay, Pius XI was a prisoner in the Vatican. He didn't have a smartphone, and he also couldn't leave the apostolic palace, okay? He couldn't go to uh, Mozambique. You know, these. this is not the John Paul II papacy in 1930. This guy had nothing to do all day except police things like his apostolic penitentiary claiming to speak for him. I, I mean, this, this would be an extraordinary uh, dereliction of duty for a pre-Pius XII pope to have done, and, and not just... Not just Pius XI, but Pius X, Leo XIII, Benedict XV. It would be a gross dereliction of duty. Because, again, we're talking about something that we, you and I both know the devil would jump on because it deals with six and nine. At least, Michael, what I wanted to do is get you to go back because you got excited. You said all the popes, all the, all the moral theologians agree with your position on Cassie Canubi, right? Every single one of them that's commented on it. Every single oh, one. Fine. Let, read me the part that you're talking about and then give me you, the, the conclusion that, quote, every moral theologian agrees with. Sure. So, uh, so you want me to read? The part that you interpret the way you say everybody else does. Sure. So uh, right here, let's see. I'm reading through 59. 59? Yep, yep. Hold on. I think it's in 59. Uh, I just do full screen. I don't see anybody. I just look at the thing. Uh, I, I believe you You have to take, okay, I'm going to say this. You have to take 59 as a whole. You have to take it as a paragraph. Oh, oh stop it, you big baby. That's important. What? No, no, no. That's okay. When you start saying it's the whole, it's the context, it's the blah blah blah. That's like modernism talk for I'm going to hide in the I'm going to hide in the cracks. I, now, tried re I tried reading it to you before, and you told me it was too long. When you read a whole long thing, you can't nail it down. Why don't you tell me the John, one? You can't pick one verse from scripture and and okay, this is I am the door. Jesus said I am the door. Was he crazy? You can quote scripture, and that's fine. What part of 59 does what part of 59 does everybody agree with that you say I'm wrong about? The part where he talk okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, for matrimony, their secondary ends, blah blah blah. Uh, oh, here we go. I'm I'm too far down. Uh, that one of the parties is sinned against rather than sinning when for a grave cause he or she reluctantly allows a perversion of the right order. Okay. That absolutely refers to a act on the part of one spouse, in which case they are being sinned against. They are allowed to reluctantly go along with it, and they it says that they shouldn't neglect from trying to dissuade the spouse over time not to do such okay, abominable so, things. All right. So that first the first two sentences of fifty nine you say refers to artificial contraception alone. Without question. Yes, with question, and it refers to things in addition to contraception. And here's why I say that, and this is why NFP has always there is there before Pius the Twelfth there was no NFP, none. There was abstinence. There was rhythm. No, no, there was rhythm. That's what the Apostolic Penitentiary referred to in eighteen. I know, but it wasn't NFP, as in mutually consented to to avoid a baby. There was, was gotta, hey, hey, hang on. There was the reluctant allowance of it to avoid sin, but you could never use it to avoid primarily a baby. No, that, that's the answer for that's avoiding babies. Now, okay, so here's why the first two sentences of 59 do not mean only contraception. Mm -hmm. So it's a sin. He's to perversion of the right order is obviously sinful, isn't it? Maybe depending, depending on what we're talking about. Are we talking oh, wait, about just, okay? Condition? Is perversion of the right order a good thing? It, it no, uh, is it it's always sinful, a sinful, isn't it? What we're talking about perversion of the right order is not good, therefore, it's sinful, depending on what we're talking about. Yes, we're okay. When is perversion of the right order good? 
I would I would say that it's probably never good, but it's okay. So it's allowed without saying it might be morally neutral. Okay. It, yes, you can allow the perversion of the right order if it's going to provided that you tell your spouse that it's wrong and it, it, it's a sin. If your party is going to commit a worse sin, you're allowed him or her to. Res, res, resort to the perversion of the right order. Now, order means first, second, third. Mm -hmm. There are things you have to put first, second, and third in the marriage act. And number one is procreation. And this person who this person who wants to uh, re, who wants to uh, try to use NFP or you know use the infertile times is not putting procreation first. It's the perversion of the right order. Now you say that quote everybody in town doesn't take it that way. That's right. And I'm, and I'm saying I can believe it because everybody in town now says the good of the spouses is essential to validity, which it's not. Even I, I, Cardinal I Burke says that. He's wrong. I agree with you. We're talking about 2021, though, when, you, when you're when you mentioning all this. I'm talking about the period from 1853, when the penitentiary first talked about this, all the way to 1930. So you're accusing six popes before Pius XII of a grave dereliction of duty. No, I'm not at all, all, buddy. No. Yes, you I'm are. Not. Listen, please. I'm not. I'm saying that the 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 definition of grave uh, cause got changed with Pius the Twelfth. Everybody said no NFP until Pius the Twelfth, and you disagree with that, which is why all I can do is appeal. To, just like you can you can trade uh, Bible verses with Protestants all day long. Of course. It's but you have to, you can, totally that's why I appeal to logic with them. How many, you know, when two Protestants disagree, which one is right? Of, of course. And the answer is, I don't want to answer that question. And neither do I. That's a, yeah. Either, either, I can't so, answer that because it's like, if you're Protestant, you cannot answer it. Okay. Right. So it boils down to, um, you have to, de you have to define what open to life means. And the, and you, it, Vatican II, as you know, contains, weaponized ambiguity and so does the new code and so does the new the new catechism mm -hmm. they're coy and fuzzy wuzzy about stuff yeah so open to life means you're not avoiding fertility but now in the new canon law they say you're not avoiding fertility per se which is not completely true oh wait hey someone's finally asking a question um there there well we'll I go We'll get to that in a second. I don't see it, but but okay. But you, know, hold on. you, gotta, you know, you got to give me some time to talk to. <laughs> um, oh wait, well, I was going to make finish the point though that that it, it after all the conversation, it boils down to how do you make how do you keep primary primary while you're avoiding primary, and you can't do it unless unless you just go nuanced and say stuff like context and junk or. Or the only other way is the complete system that I'm proposing where primary purpose is maintained if you keep the intrinsic nature of the act and view as a matter of justice your procreative responsibility over the course of your marriage and filter everything through all of the theologians and the penitentiaries that address this before. Wait, wait, wait. I don't care about 2021. I don't look to 2021 nah. for anything. I'm talking about before Pius the Twelfth, and this is a real problem because we're hey, talking hey, about the 1850s. You're, you're, it's not. You're making it into rocket science. Your average, your average illiterate farmer with no teeth needs to catch on to this. Okay, you're you're helping me make my point by bringing up the average person because the average person never ever uh, received instruction on how to. Uh, how many children to have or not have, or when to have relations or not have them. These things weren't considered. It was, you know what, you're going to do what you're going to do. And everybody was just left alone. It, 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 you know, they were so reluctant in okay. the theology manuals in the 1800s to say any of this. They the Confessors were instructed. And I can Michael, 
Hold, hold on, John. Hold on. I can source this for you. Con uh, confessors were instructed to incur uh, to check with check about onanism, check about adultery. Um, you know, there was a handful of things they were supposed to start to maybe open the window in the confessional, but even that was supposed to be incredibly delicate, especially with the woman for obvious reasons. Hey, let's not run, uh, Michael. This is this is vital to understanding this. These things were never talked about with the average person. That's a key point. How is, how is, how do I keep making babies primary while I'm avoiding making babies? It, let me ask you something. If you've had, uh, this, yeah, no, this, see, is this, your question. this is the answer to your question. If you've had 12 children over the course of your marriage, um, I'm pretty sure as a matter of justice, you have fulfilled the divine precept to increase. No, no, no. Yes, you have. How many, no, no. How many kids does God want you to have? Who knows? You don't get to decide. And, and I would. You know, who, who, 12 kids is justice says who? It could be three. Says who gets to decide what justice is. God does. You work intelligently with God as co-creators of life. No, 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 no. You don't work. God decides. You, none of this justice stuff. So, like I back to my question, how do you keep procreation primary while avoiding procreation and and making something else primary? Sure. So you keep procreation primary by leaving intact the intrinsic nature of the act. So, but, but that begs the question, what's the main reason you're doing the act if you're, if, if you are trying to not have a baby? Then Some you're, other reason. Okay. So you, you're not making, you're making the other reason primary. You are not subordinating primary. You, in other words, the reason you're doing it is not for a baby. You cannot, you, if you're going to, like I use the food analogy. You're going to fast or you're going to eat, but you can't do both. What are you doing when your wife is pregnant? You're not avoiding pregnancy. Yes, you are. You're not the avoiding The it. act is intrinsically close to life. Um, intrinsically is the wrong. I'm sorry. The act is in reality, in say, it is. You are not, you are not attempting to avoid pregnancy. Yes, you are. You're you, not attempting. You to, there's nothing you can do to avoid. Pre you're not avoiding pregnancy. You're, you're explicitly using it for a secondary end. Let me let me take control of the of how I was thinking about that. You're explicitly uh, pursuing a secondary end with no regard to the primary. You are. You can consider secondary ends as long as you keep the procreation primary. It's not even considered. It's not even on the table. She's already pregnant. Uh huh. So yeah. you're not. So so you're not doing anything to avoid pregnancy. Just okay. like if someone's infertile, you're allowed, you're not to, because of reasons of age or whatever. That's right. Um, so you're also allowed to in those cases, you're exactly correct, right? Because you're not avoiding pregnancy. So, but you are. It, it, if your wife is pregnant, the act has zero chance of producing another pregnancy, save incredibly rare circumstances of two uteruses. But and you're not, you're, you're okay, you're, you're, you're not trying to outsmart nature. You're not working against nature. Nature makes babies. You're not trying to work against it. You're, you, you're, you, you cannot make a secondary purpose primary. Mm -hmm. And the, you're, you're just, you're going on and on about how, I guess I'm going on and on too. Let's That's take a good. question for a second. Let's yeah, and, and, and just to be clear, John, I don't mind if you go on and on, but you have to let me go on and on too. <laughs> well, the problem is with that is, you talk till midnight and you don't get anywhere, which is why I try. Listen for a sec, Mike, baby. I I'm tried listening. to nail you down on Facebook because it's a lot more efficient. And what I end up getting is a lot of LOLs. And then you don't answer the question and run away. Uh, That's John, what I get from you. Okay. Let me, let me clarify. Because you can't go on and on, on verbally. Sure. So, 
let me clarify the LOL, because again, it kind of all ties into this. What you're proposing is a system where we ignore the magisterium in the 19th century. No, and we at no, first I'm the not proposing. No, 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 no. Okay. It, okay. When you have like a Republican and a Democrat debate, mm -hmm. they're, they're never agreeing and they just go on and on and people get to, so, <laughs> so we as, we as Catholics have to be of the same mind on this. We have to. Because we can't be different, because Catholics believe one thing. So we have to be of the same mind as far as we have to agree on what fifty nine means. That's what we have to do. Okay, well then this is easy. Everybody agrees with me. No, it's not easy, because well, well I need you to I need you to quote one source that agrees with you, just one. Well, there's everybody who. Uh, the, the, there's the Cardinal Hayes guy, and there's a whole bunch of others before. He's not a moral theologian. And, and if we want to, and if right. we want to talk about his qualifications, hey, uh, let's just simple. simple. Red, Once the whole know. world was Aryan, okay. So you sure. don't just go with the flow. It doesn't matter what everybody says. It matters what's right. And so this is why Facebook is handy. Because you can bypass all the chitter chatter and get to the nub of the thing. And I'm going to accuse you, Michael, of running away on Facebook. I'm not running away. You do. Because no. when I, here's what happens. When I no. ask you, listen, Mike, when I ask you questions and I get you into the corner and say two plus two equals what? And then you say LOL and then go away. Sean, that's after I've answered your question six times, and I'll refer no, to it. No, no, I wouldn't. No, no, no. Frequently. Oh, yes. Wrong. I, I, every single time, Michael, I as I end the conversation or I end the thread with it asking a question, and you don't answer it. And then I I've ask. I've already answered it five times. Ask the other guy. No, you, you did. No, 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 no. You Because it, you could make that obvious. Um, So because of the nature of this it, it it it's you got to nail it down or you can run away with it pretty easy it, so and the church nailed it down for us you know that's the thing the the i, I mean the penitentiary if the church nailed it down there would be nothing to talk about there the, isn't john there isn't anything to talk about in 99.99999% of the catholic world and the good faithful priests of the fraternity of saint peter and the society of saint pius the 10th and the institute of christ the king this is not a question i'm doing this here for you as a courtesy as a oh, that's so nice of you in christ but you know uh, there this is not an open question in in the minds and the confessionals of all the good priests around the world this is not an open question it it, it, it is because once when you start asking the question, how do you keep procreation primary while making procreation not primary? The answer is, the answer is we're not going to go there. You you can't. This is what's going on. There's they're they're changing the debt. You the, the insubordinate and here by the way, Michael. That's why it doesn't make sense. Which is why we never talk about primary purpose anymore. You it, why do you suppose? that Vatican II and the new code never mentioned primary and secondary purposes anywhere. So the new code absolutely does. And no, it doesn't. Where Vatican II does also. Vatican II does, no, zero. They, they, they don't, um, I don't recall which one's which. One of them mentions them both without assigning a hierarchy. And the other, if I'm not mistaken, may have flipped it but mentions them both they're both mentioned in both sources maybe that's not no, right. the word primary <laughs> and secondary do okay. not exist yeah okay fine they may have taken those words out okay because if there's no primary and secondary who's sure. to say what's order no i agree with you there's weaponized ambiguity what you know so, so this is why they do it because agree. if you have to keep things in the right order and keep secondary subordinated you better not label it otherwise it won't hold air now let's let's click on a question for a second. Sure, I, I um, can't see any questions, so I'm going to rely on you for this. Now, can you see it now? Oh, I can. Yes, thank you. Uh, oh wait, wait. Right. Here's here. Okay, principal authorities magistrate. Fine. Okay, moral acceptability of NFP with due regard for moral parameters. Okay, humanity vitae. Um, reason. Yeah. So, so, 
I don't care what Amoris Letizia says. Neither do I. And I don't care what Humanae Vitae says. If it if it's different from what the church has always taught. Thankfully, it's not. It No, it is. Because it says you can make the secondary purpose primary. That's what it says. So, again, we have to qualify what Humanae Vitae was addressing. Humanae Vitae was... Wait, specific- please. Let's read, read the next thing. Let's read yeah. the next question. Humanae Vitae was specifically written to address the pill. That has to be said. Um, it can be said, but Humanae Vitae allows pursuing the secondary ends in the primary position. That wasn't the purpose of the document. I don't care. That's what it does. And and I would uh, I would deny that. Let's move to the next question. <laughs> There isn't another question. It just oh, I'm says, sorry. I thought you said there was another one. conjugal union or menopause. We already, yeah. we need more questions. But anyway. No, so, that's a good one. But that's a good one. The conjugal union post-menopause. That's an excellent. That's what 59 says really clearly these, right there. These people in, in their 65th year of life, they remain open in the sense that they leave the act open to life. But they're not open in the active sense, nor are they actively pursuing it in any real sense. They only remain open to it. It doesn't until matter they if they're, it doesn't matter what they're doing in a real sense, as long as they're not avoiding fertility, which they're not. If, because of the, the primary purpose. So you can't take, you can't use marriage for your own purposes. So if, if I recall correctly, I'm going to try very hard to quote you directly. You had said several times in this conversation and in our Facebook conversations that the intention of the couple is what determines what ends they're pursuing. Wrong. So no. Is Wrong. Not Sorry. Procreation. No. no, it's not the intention. It's physically what they're doing. Are they avoiding fertility? If you are doing that which produces babies while avoiding babies you are inverting the ends sure but you're not avoiding babies you know again sorry you are but you're not okay you're, wait a minute. You're, okay, look look man contraception avoids babies right yes it does okay does nfp avoid babies the intention is to avoid babies however you're using the intent- yeah you're using all the biological material and you're but not... You're, but the that. biological material is out to launch at that time. Yeah. That's why Wait, you're using... Maybe, maybe. No, not maybe. It oh, is. No, 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 no. There, there are NFP babies running around all over the place. There's contraceptive babies running around all over the place. Yes, one had a direct attempt to artificially obstruct the act. The NFP other- had a direct attempt to avoid the fertile window. Which so is allowed same. by the church. No, it's not allowed by the church because you cannot do an act without the primary purpose being the reason for the act. And that means a baby. So you're doing the act to pursue a secondary purpose, number one. If there were no, listen for a second. Let's just say there was no such thing as secondary purposes at all. They didn't exist. Didn't exist. The only reason for the baby, the only reason for the act is to produce a baby. And if you didn't want a baby, then you wouldn't do the act at all. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't do it. Just like I don't I don't pick up a hammer to hit a nail if I don't want to hit the nail. Mm-hmm. If there's no secondary purposes. So the point is is that you're pursuing these secondary purposes as your main reason for the act. Mm-hmm. That's an insubordination. That's what Cassidy Knuby forbid. So you disagree and you're talking because everybody else does and all this stuff and I'm going, "Wait. You have to be able to say that not pursuing babies is actually making procreation number one. That's what you have to say with a straight face. So, yeah, and that's not required. You don't have It to- is required right there. It says you have to keep procreation primary. You and, have to. Mm-hmm. And procreation is, uh, let's call it respected, by allowing the biological material to do what it will without any kind of artificial attempt to obstruct. 
Okay, so that, that, you are that, using a that, natural. That. Okay, so instead of using an artificial attempt to obstruct, you're using a natural attempt to a natural means to uh, obstruct. You're not obstructing anything. We talked you about you are obstructing. You are with the calendar. You're obstructing it. You are saying we don't we don't do the baby making act during this time because a baby might come from it. And the church does not require relations during a fertile window. There is no ecclesial. It, or but it does window. require that you do not. It does. It's not that it requires relations during the fertile window, but it does say you cannot make the ends insubordinate. You cannot pursue secondary ends mm -hmm. while try, while trying to avoid the primary. NFP avoids baby. Plain and simple, there's no way around that. The purpose of NFP is to avoid a baby. Sure. Babies are the primary purpose. So how are you pursuing the primary purpose while avoiding the primary purpose? And, and I'm telling you, you don't have to actively pursue the primary purpose. You just have to be open to it. You just have to allow God to do it. Okay, so if you're open, open to the primary God. purpose while at the same time going out of your way to make sure you're closed to the primary purpose, how is that working? You you forget your NFP. If you're going to do the act, do the act. If you can't have a baby, don't do the act. But you are... You're... Again, you're 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 trying to avoid nature, and you're not you can't avoid it unless yeah. you put it you, you unless you're not putting it number one. But but you're not but you're not avoiding nature. See, uh, animals don't have control over this. We do, and so we can choose to procreate or not procreate at. at you know, for, for two months or six months or 10 okay. years. Okay. So, so, but the, the church says, fine, but the church says you can't avoid fertility. The church does not say that. Um, all right. Well, let me restate that. The, sure. You can't, you cannot make infertility your number one reason. Just restate it one more time. Let's go. You cannot, you cannot have relations while not keeping fertility number one. Yeah. Again, I disagree. Disagree. Um, you you don't have to consider any. Look, like I, I you know, we agreed to be um, not very colorful with our language. So I, I, you know, as veiled as I can, life is messy. Sometimes you don't have any regard for why you're doing something or not doing something uh, that's legitimate and allowed. It's just because, or maybe it's lustful, or maybe it's, uh, you know, there's any number of other scenarios that it could be. And you don't, you know, the, the intention to have a child is intrinsic in the marriage vows. To have a valid marriage, you have to intend to have children. Uh, you never have to actualize that if one of you ends up being infertile. I know you know that, but just for the sake of listeners, um, you know, that doesn't make a marriage invalid if somebody's infertile. Um, so you have to have the intention going in to have children. And then you have to have that in a, uh, in, in the broadest possible sense. Um, you know, again, the, and this, the way to really bring this home is to talk about how the church has talked about lustful encounters being venial. If lustful encounters are venial, then an act that is open to life in principle because you haven't done anything to obstruct that can't oh, what is, what's the difference and between, and what's pursuing the difference between, ends of love and quieting of concupiscence what's and all the difference between things. open to life and reality and open to life in principle uh, so when, I, okay, that's a good question. So when I talk about being a, an act, being intrinsically open to life in principle, that refers to the procreation, uh, the, the procreative act between a man and a woman. So in fertile couples, the marital act is still procreative in principle. It's not procreative in say, in reality, in itself, because they're infertile, but it is procreative in principle. Homosexual acts are of course not procreative. They are, they can't be procreative in principle. A man and a woman who can complete the act, who are not impotent, those acts are 
procreative in principle for 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 a 70 year old who's gone through menopause and you know whatever the act is no uh the act is still procreative in principle even though it will never okay. be procreative in reality in sick all right so that's very that's very important that's very important And I, I, you know, and I would, I would invite you to speak, you know, cause I, I do like listening when you, you know, when you're um, letting us know where you're coming from on this, I would like to hear more from you on the penitentiary in 1853 and the penitentiary. There's in 1853. no reason. Look, it's super simple. And they're all talking about the all that. All those questions were about grave cause of sin, not grave cause of babies. Pius the 12th, if you look, if you can just go to USCCB website, they'll say, ain't nothing going on with NFP till Pius the 12th. Yeah, they're that, wrong. They're wrong that, about everything. No. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't quote the USCCB no, to no, no, no. anything. I wouldn't let them, I wouldn't let them catechize my it, kids. Hey. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure you wouldn't right. either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, it's it, 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 like, I keep them a broken record, but that's all it boils down to. It's, if you're not, if you're avoiding fertility, you are not make you're you you're not you you your ends are insubordinated. If you're avoiding fertility, you are you have your you. It's a perversion of the right order, because that's the reason for the act. Okay, now we can even if I concede that. Let me try a different angle. Even if I concede that the church allows it. When there is grave cause. Grave cause of what? Grave cause to avoid pregnancy. No. Grave cause to avoid sin. No, that's yes. that's not true. Although, yeah, although that would be it right there, bro. That would be one of the grave causes, however. That's no. not the overarching answer, but that is one of the reasons why it would be allowed. Yes. For a gr for grave cause in of of if you're getting sinned against for grave cause, you can allow the perversion of the right order. This That's is right. why I say, right. this is why I say the grave, it's, it's grave cause creep. It's grave cause change. It used to be grave cause for sin. If you can keep your spouse from sin and then Pius XII change it to grave cause for a baby. So... Yeah, but that's, John, that's just not true. It, no, Pius XI was talking about avoiding onanism. He wasn't... I mean, that's what he's talking about in 59. All right, listen... Um, Let's let's see what Greg here sure. says. Hang on, a second. hang on a sec. Number one, it says principal authority. Okay, come on, Greg. Let's get some better. Yeah, let's get this good. Moral permissive conjugate in post menopause. Yes, fifty. Your post menopause is fine because you're not avoiding fertility because the primary purpose is babies. Yes, but you're not. But you're not. I, I see what he's getting at because you're not actively pursuing reproduction at that point. You're not. It's not even in your mind. But you're not avoiding it. You, oh, I would you, agree with you. As long as that's your distinction, fine. So it, 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 the, of, the reason why there, the reason why Catholic families had ten kids in 1925 and they have four kids in 2021 is NFP. That's the reason. Okay, I'm so glad you came back to that because I wanted to jump on that, and then we kept going. All right, that is not the case. The reason that you have, uh, so I want, both, I want to address not both sides. Let, let's. There's two things to talk about here. First of all, why did you have 10 kids in, uh, or 12? Gosh, I've looked at my family tree. There's like some people in the 1800s with 18, 20, 24. Why were people doing that? It's really quite simple. 22 of them died before adulthood. Uh, you know, I, I, life wasn't- it's not simple. It's because you weren't allowed to practice NFP. No, that's categorically false. All of the, all of the uh, uh, manuals for confessors taught that these couples should be left alone if they were practicing rhythm. For a grave cause of avoiding sin. And Paul, and, and then in 1951, the grave cause was expanded to avoid baby only. Yeah. And again, again, now you, again, and so that's why it, it, the, 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 the tip of the spear is what is the, what is the, you cannot like it's a this is where a, this is the end of the rainbow this is the bottom line is paragraph 59 you're not forbidden to consider quote nfp mm -hmm. as long as the primary end is 
as long as the secondary ends are subordinated to the primary end. That would be another way of stating it. You can do NFP. You, you can, you're allowed to, as long as the, the, the secondary ends remain subordinated to the primary end. By definition, NFP puts the primary end at the bottom of the heap. Which would mean that if we interpret it your way, it's absurd on its face and it was a worthless statement and the magisterium doesn't... No, no. Statements. Take, take a breath. The only, no, way it's not absurd. It, the only way to take it is the way I'm explaining it. That's no, the only not. way it makes sense. No, it's not. It's not absurd. It's saying that you, you have to keep what's primary primary and you can't... You can't pursue secondary ahead of the primary. And there, there... If, you couldn't, if you couldn't do that, if you if you couldn't do it the way you understand it, then the rest of then that quote from the uh from oh gosh, whoever you were just quoting, the quote is nonsensical then. No, I was well, quoting you, can do it, but you have to do it in this way that doesn't support subordinate the ends. Uh, the only way to interpret the ends not being subordinated is the way I'm explaining it. Otherwise, your way makes the statement, it, it makes the magisterium to have released a statement that means nothing. Sure, you can do an FP. You a mouthful of assertion with nothing behind it. John. You basically are saying you're wrong in an excited way. That's what you're John, doing. John, the way that you've explained it, you're saying that the, magist or the church said you can do NFP, but you can't. Because in order to do it, you have to keep the primary primary and the secondary secondary news when you Michael, can do that so it news, no the church never said you can do nfp but you can't the church says you can avoid sin but you can't use it to avoid a baby pius XII said guess what you can now use it to avoid a baby that's the revolution you have to this is why it boils down to how do you use nfp and subordinate the secondary to the primary, the answer is it's impossible. You can't do it. You are pursuing a secondary end and as a primary end when you use NFP. Okay, yeah, and again, I mean, everyone who's commented on this from 1853 on disagrees, but let's, but one other- it, thing, it, one I, other Fine, you can say all kinds of stuff about everybody, everybody. You one other have to answer the question. One other point you made that can't get lost in this. I'm sorry, you, you mentioned this an hour ago and just mentioned it again. I haven't said anything on it yet. The reason you see two kids in the pews these days is obviously because of contraception. It's got nothing to do with NFP. NFP is practiced by maybe one percent of Catholics. I, okay, maybe, fine. Maybe, maybe. Right. Okay. Doubt. But yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. This is important. 99% of the people in the pews are, are artificially contracepting. You and I both know that. It has nothing to do with NFP. NFP is practiced by this many people. Fine. Okay, who, fine. Who yeah. are trying to live according to the magisterium and what she teaches and use the and use no. it appropriately. Go ahead. Okay. Go so ahead. The it, it the the like I said in the beginning, you mm -hmm. can you can talk all day about a lot of stuff but it, it the bottom line is how do you keep procre procreation primary while while pursuing not pursuing procreation sure. and and i'm not a protestant i don't have to answer that the magisterium you have to answer that no the magisterium works out the theology and it's up to me to say okay i let me ask you a okay question please please how do you keep procreation primary while pursuing while not while not pursuing procreation and I, I again i've already explained that you know life is messy and sometimes you have no reason at all sometimes you have the explicit reason to have a child sometimes it's lustful there's there can be 10 different reasons why you would engage in the marital act and only one of those the one that directly pursues having a child would pursue it the other nine or however many there are don't you know, again, I mean, I, I, you know, NFP does not pursue fertility, does it? No, of course not. Well, actually, okay. okay. Now, now, you can, now you can use NFP to conceive. Obviously, but we're not talking, we're about, talking about Right, right. NFP right. does not pursue fertility. It avoids fertility, doesn't it? Yes, the intention is to not avoid fertility in that particular instance. That's correct. Okay, so. Why would you do an act which makes babies if you're avoiding babies? 
because you're secondary end. Another end. Okay. Now, possibly if you are doing the act primarily for the secondary ends, are you doing? You're not doing it primarily for the primary end, are you? Sure. Now, that is the, the word forbidden is in here. You cannot pursue secondary ends is your main motivation. That's forbidden. And I'm and I'm proposing that quite often there are no ends in mind. That's what I'm trying Doesn't to Doesn't matter what's in mind, just like the pro abortion, pro life abortionist. It matters what you're doing. If you are trying to not have a baby, then you don't do the act which makes babies. John, you're, you're, you're saying it doesn't matter what's in mind, but we're talking about intentions and ends. This is what's in mind. And what I'm saying is that at three in the morning, that there are no ends in mind. You know, okay. no I, I, I understand. But okay. NFP is a, is NFP is a 30 day deal, not a 3 a.m. deal. And you are saying, okay, we're going to avoid in this window because this is what this is when there could be a pregnancy, and we don't want a pregnancy right now. Mm -hmm. So, right. overall, during the month, what we're doing is we're pursuing secondary ends primarily. <clears throat> now, how can you justify pursuing secondary ends primarily? I don't have to. Yes, you do. No, because it says right here, it, you can pursue secondary ends as long as they are subordinated to the primary end. Yeah, and they're subordinated when I leave <laughs> the intrinsic nature of the act intact. Um, and, 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 no, and, no, 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 stop it right there. No, no, no. There's an important qualifier. And, Wait a minute. and we talked about way back in the beginning. There isn't any also, more qualifiers. You're saying no, the only thing that matters. Oh, no, no, no. There is a question. John, you have to let me get this out. The other important qualifier is you have to be open to the life that you might produce even at a 2% clip. No, you don't. Oh, yes, you do. Well, I'm, I'm, of course, issue. you can't kill your baby. You can't. You don't have a bad attitude about your baby. But right. not only can you not kill it, you can't. You wait, 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 wait. So you're saying you're saying we can pursue the secondary ends primarily as long as we don't use contraception. You, you, in other words, you, 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 maybe if you have grave cause, may, maybe. Wait, wait. So again, the primary purpose for doing something. It says it right here. Mm -hmm. Must be fertility. Must be a baby. And you're telling me that I can pursue secondary ends while at the same time keeping procreation primary. That's what you're saying, right? I'm saying that... Is that true? Yes or no? Can I pursue secondary ends and keep procreation primary at the same time? You can keep procreation on the table by maintaining the intrinsic nature of the act. Um, you can, but are you pr keeping it on the table is one thing. Are you making procreation primary while you are primarily pursuing secondary ends? No. It says you have to keep procreation primary. Otherwise, you, are, it, 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 you have to keep the secondary ends subordinate. So... They are subordinated. Uh, they okay, are. So, so so let me jump in here now. We're trying, I think we're playing a little whack-a-mole. Just a minute, please, because I'm trying to nail this down, but it's difficult in conversation, which is why I kind of go, that's why Facebook's good. So I'm going to tell you that what I experience from you on Facebook is when I get you into the corner, you do the LOL and you disappear. So I know you deny that, but I'm going to tell you to your face, this is what I get. And if I'm wrong about something, so when I do pursue you on Facebook with questions, I'm going to ask you to, to not do LOL and run away um, at the end. I want you to, I want an answer. Um, Cause LOL. otherwise, Huh? LOL, as I've already explained, is after the sixth or seventh time I've provided the answer, usually along with one or two other people who have also already provided the answer, 
then yes, I resort to LOL. No, no. You, you, okay, you listen, die. listen. That, I, I disagree with what you said. You, you're telling me you answered, but I, 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 I assert that you didn't. So mm -hmm. when I ask you to, a direct question, two plus two equals blank, I don't want you to say, LOL, I've answered that six times. I want, mm -hmm. you, to say, I want you to answer it so that I, to make it obvious. Let's take another question here for a second. Sure, please. If a couple use NFP after one or two children, wait, if a couple used NFP after one or two children is not what is intended for. Okay, she didn't say this quite right. I do believe many well-meaning Catholics are misusing it and offending God. Yep. Question, would it be moral for a couple after having two or three children to use NFP until infertility? I don't think so. I guess she answered that question. Um, um, okay, so. But, yeah, but, but you can't say you don't think so. Maybe for those people it is. Okay. If if I'm saying NFP is intrinsically immoral. But if it's intrinsically immoral, it can never be allowed. Correct. And it can never be allowed because you're insubordinating the ends. You are pursuing a secondary purpose at the expense of the primary. You are abusing it because you're this is the procreative act, and you're saying it's not the procreative act. It is the procreative act, but you're saying not for us. So when the penitentiary allowed rhythm in 1853 and in 1880, and when it was referenced again in 1930, I think it was 1934, after Casti Canubi was written and they were responding to the dubium that was submitted, what was Rome doing under six different popes? Six. Let me ask you, okay, what was Rome doing? They were responding to the question, mm -hmm. is there, can you objectively say that resorting to the infertile times is always wrong mm -hmm. and the answer is not if one spouse is trying to avoid sin of the other spouse to avoid the sin of the other spouse so we can't judge what's going on you cannot say both can practice nfp to make a secondary purpose primary they were saying in all these six pope stuff you're talking about that same thing as Cassie Kanubi. If someone wants to uh, do a perversion of the ends, that's a sin, but you can allow that. You can allow, you can reluctantly allow your smart, your partner to use contraception or to, or to avoid fertility to keep them from other sins like onanism or adultery. Sure. And, and, and again, I've explained explicitly that that is not correct because you know, you know you're asserting no, it's not correct no i'm not asserting i'm just, using the hey, penitentiary in 1934 that responded just, and referenced the 1880 response you can you can talk a lot and you can be emotional but it doesn't mean anything john it, i haven't spoken very much we've been talking for an hour and 37 minutes i've probably spoken i know but i'm saying that i've probably spoken 10 of the hour and 30 just to be just, clear just to say um, you, 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 you 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 assert you you can assert stuff, but you have. This is why. This is why when talking to Protestants, you can throw Bible verses all day. You have to use logic. John, I've used the penitentiary under three popes. You're the one making assertions with nothing to base them on. You have no references. You have what your interpretation is. I'm the one appealing to the apostolic penitentiary. No, you. Okay, yes, I am. am, and you're arbitrarily asserting with no reference. Uh, no, what I'm saying is that what you're saying they said is not what they're saying. In other words, they agree with me. And I'm telling you that the penitentiary interpreted it my way and no one has officially interpreted it your way. I'm not arbitrarily asserting anything. Yeah, no, no you are. Okay, I'm going to pull it up. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to pull it up. Wait, let's I'm, look for the next thing here. Yeah, okay. while, while I look for the direct quote from 1934. Go it ahead. Doesn't, it, Yes, they're referring to something other than what you think is what it is. Hey, except they're not, but that's okay. Go ahead, because I'm going to pull up the quote. Go ahead. Father Hardin says, St. Augustine, without use of contraceptives, but performed with what we might call a contraceptive frame of mind is nevertheless wrong and venial sinful. That's true. That is true. Um, okay. Do either of you agree with Father Hardin? Well. On what point in particular? Yeah. Yeah. At least they'll have to tell us that. Um, I, I would imagine I, I do. I, I, I would uh, maybe assert that in advance. But uh, so again, the 
all the people you want to quote, they're speaking of avoiding sin, not avoiding baby. Uh, that yeah, that's flatly incorrect. The it's not flatly uh, incorrect. Yes, yes, it is. All of the no, moral theology not. manuals are talking about avoiding a baby. The penitentiary in fifty three is talking about a baby. Eighteen eighty and the nineteen thirty four. No, they're talking about avoiding sin, and that's no, why. Not. That's why Casti Kanubi doesn't say avoid baby. It says avoid sin. John, again, your interpretation of Casti Kanubi there is arbitrary. It's your interpretation. I'm reading the black and white right in front of me. And it the other says you can. It never, no, it never says both people for a grave reason to avoid a baby can make use of infertile times. It doesn't say anything like that. That's all new stuff that's the Pope created. He says you can, pers that's why they don't talk about the hierarchy of ends because it, get, it gets in the way big time. It's a problem. You can't have the hierarchy of ends and humanae vitae at the same time. Okay. That's why they don't talk about it. Okay, my turn. So 1853, it, we're just, we're going to have to do this word for word. 1853, the question was asked, should spouses be reprehended who make use of marriage only on the days when in the opinion of some doctors, conception is impossible? The reply from the penitentiary in 1853, after mature examination, we have decided that such spouses should not be disturbed, provided they do nothing that impedes generation, period. Okay, 1880. And, and let me do every one of these, because this is, this is the whole argument. 1880, when the penitentiary uh, issued a more general response, the question was this, whether it is licit to make use of marriage only on those days when it is more difficult for conception to occur. And the response was spouses using the aforesaid method are not to be disturbed and a confessor may with due caution suggest this proposal to spouses if his other attempts to lead them away from the de de goodness gracious detestable crime of onanism have proved fruitless. Okay, that was 1880. That's what then, Kanubi says. Then in Casti Kanubi, you have everything Pius XI said, and then the penitentiary, give me one second. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's see. I apologize. Let's see here. Two of those were close together and one of them's a little further down. Uh, here we go. Uh, let's see. Deprive. Oh, I thought I had it. Oh, man. Uh, here we go. Pius the 11th. I'm right here. It's so cool. It's got to be buried in here somewhere. Uh, penitentiary. I can't find the, the Pius XI part, but I, I can over time. The it's important all the, thing, it's all the, the same. The, the take home in the in the Pius XI one is exactly that it's all the same because all they did to respond was refer the questioner back to the previous two responses. Right, that's right. That's all that's all they did. All they so, did in 1934-ish. So they're referring to Cassie Canubi 59. That's what they're saying. They're saying if you're if if one of the parties is sinning then you can reluctantly allow the perversion of the right order. That's it. So it's not NFP. It's a reluctant allowance of the perversion of the right order. Yeah, that's but that's not, yeah, but I just read to you that that's not the case. No, I read you did to, not. I read, you to, read to me that you with, if they're, the perversion of the right order is making use of marriage at infertile times. And it specifically says here, I'm going to read it again. Word for word, uh, because that one I did read to you. Uh, let's see. Uh, after mature examination, we have decided that such spouses should not be disturbed, provided they do nothing that impedes generation. Um, uh, hold on. And then there was the part about the uh, infertile time. Regarding the exclusive use of the infertile period, the exact question, word for word, whether the practice is licit in itself by which spouses who for just and grave causes wish to avoid offspring. It literally says avoid offspring. For in the just course. and grave causes. That's right. So it can't right. be. So you have to have two. You've got to have. Okay. It's not ju it's just and grave causes. It, it so the, the, the primary baseline is the only reason this is a question is because you have serious reason to avoid a baby. That's right. That is the now. Only if you have serious reason to avoid a baby, don't do the thing that makes babies. No, you cannot say that because the magisterium responded and said, leave Please those Please don't interrupt. Home. Okay. If you have a serious reason to not have to, if you, if you have a serious reason to avoid a baby, don't do the thing that makes babies. Now, if on top of all that, if you have a spouse 
who can't go along with that, you can allow the perversion of the right order, which means that your spouse pursuing a secondary end. And when that's go ahead, going go on, when that's going on, you 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 don't disturb the couple because you're allowing them to make the discernment. Who's to know what's going on between them and that stuff? So you don't judge. You cannot say you can never make use of the infertile period if because there could be a just and cause a just reason, and that just reason has to do with keeping your party from sinning. If you your only just reason is because you can't have a baby right now, that doesn't do it. That that is that means if your only just reason is we can't have a kid, it's it's called complete abstinence. Okay, first of all, you're arbitrarily uh, applying that. The church has never said it's it's called complete abstinence. You're simply making that up out of nowhere. The reason but I say that no is because that. you have to define perversion of the right order. And the only way you can define it is the way that I've done systematically using the Magisterium from 1853 all the way down. No, and you've asserted sense. that pervert the only perversion of the right order is artificial contraception. And that's not it. Uh, that's not exactly how I phrase that. You can pervert okay, the can order. You, you can you can marry, let's say, at 25 and what say... Is, no, oh, no, I don't care about what age you marry. The perversion of the right order means what's number one needs to stay right. number one. You can pervert the right order by choosing to avoid the fertile window all the way through your marriage. That is subverting the right order. Okay. So what if you... But, but some... Okay, but this sometimes... They can last through the life of the whole marriage. So, right, and that was be avoiding the fertile window through the whole marriage. Mm -hmm. Can be a perversion of the right order. Yes, because the right order is procreation number one, right? That's right. So you can say, let's have now, one. Cassie Canubi, or sorry, midwife says you can avoid fertility through the entire life of the marriage if necessary. That's. It, it, but it, but That's it, what it says. It doesn't say that. In midwives, it's exactly what it says. It, you can if you can even decide to avoid fertility for the entire length of the marriage if that's how long your serious reason lasts. And this is why it's different. The perversion of the right order means making a secondary cause your main motivation. Your you know, it means not it, it means avoiding the the primary purpose. And you said you the whole marriage but i can show you why it says you can't avoid it for the whole marriage speak fp was created out of thin air in 1951 but before that they were using the rhythm method and this was no, they weren't using the they were using the rhythm method to avoid sin not to avoid baby no, they were using not. they were using abstinence to avoid the baby John, that's just not true. In the responses from the penitentiary, in the question, it says, what if they are trying to avoid the baby? That's in the question. I, I know. And then, so that's that's you, underlying. You're, you're, deny, you're denying that's that that was the issue. I'm telling you. you, it was to avoid, the, you yes. Question. The only reason it's being discussed, like I said, the underlying issue is avoiding the baby. But you also, you're, you're also dealing with the part, the other spouse who's not going along with this avoiding the baby thing, who's going along with the abstinence. Mm -hmm. So that you can use the rhythm method and pervert the right order. So the rhythm method of avoiding fertility is a perversion of the right order because the right order is procreation number one. The rhythm church... method is procreation mm -hmm. not number one. Mm -hmm. The church cannot allow something that's intrinsically evil. In the beginning of this conversation, you said that it's intrinsically evil and can never be allowed. But I didn't say, yes, that's right. But it can it, 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 but at the same time, marriage is two people and you have marital rights. You have, you have, you, you've got the marriage debt. So you have to allow the marriage debt. So if somebody is going to do a sin, but they're, they, you have to render the marriage because that's your deal too. So, it's it's a it's a little bit of a tricky thing. It the perversion of the right order is always immoral. However, 
And so is contraception always immoral, but you're allowed to work with it. If your spouse is going to insist on it, it's their sin and you're supposed to tell them no. However, it's intrinsically wrong. Um, if it were intrinsically wrong, you know, I, 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 this is the issue. I'm glad we're here now because this is the issue. And I, I would ask you then, what was the penitentiary doing in 1853 and in 1880 when they allowed it for the people who were trying to avoid a baby? Here's the answer. The same thing as Catholic Community 59. They were saying, if your spouse cannot deal with complete abstinence, that's you're allowed. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt, but that phrase is not in there. If it's it's understood that if you're going to have babies, do the act that makes babies. If you're not going to have babies, don't do the act that makes babies. If it's you're, understood. If, you're, who, if your who? spouse can't go with that, you can allow the perversion of the right order for that spouse all the while telling him it's a sin and try to dissuade him. And that's why it, it says, leave those people alone because you can't really judge what they're doing and who's at fault and that stuff. However, to, to both people together saying, hey, let's avoid a baby, but make baby, let's do the baby act, but, but avoid babies at the same time, who's with me? You can't do that because you're perverting the right order. But when you offer people this thing, they can't refuse because everyone wants divorce and everyone wants contraception. Sure. So the penitentiary, uh, when they responded to this this question in Cassie Kenobi 59, they interpret the first part of that, uh, Holy Church knows, blah, 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 that their uh, party is sinned against, uh, not infrequently. You know the quote. I'm sure you know it well. Uh, that they uh, they can allow a perversion of the right order. That's speaking of onanism, like we talked about. And then as it continues, it talks about defects in time and defects of nature. Um, the, this was covered, and they said the defect of time was referring to the infertile window. And if you interpret it that way... Wait a minute. Well, stop you right there. Wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. Well, pardon century. me. The defect in time, you say, is referring to the infertile window it and also age or other reasons of time who yes. said that when who who said the defect in time means infertile window the moral theologians no they didn't yes they did no 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 there are there there are, are in other words the church has never said that Cassidy Canubi saying the defect in time means means or, or the, certain because of either of reasons of time or certain defects. So reasons of time you're saying means infertile window and also age. Anything that has to do with time. Okay, no, the church has never said that reasons uh, of time means infertile window. But it did. And hold on, I'm gonna oh, shucks, I'm not prepared with that one, but I can source that another time. There's countless theologians that taught that after uh, I don't care about so, countless theologians because those are the designs, John. That's how moral theological decisions are made, and that's how lives are lived. That's um, that's how it this works. is this stuff is divine law, though. You can't change the definition of marriage. Yes. Yeah. However, you have the, in moral theology, you have what's called the divines. These are people that make decisions in real time, addressing issues as they occur. When you, ha then you have different schools of how these are interpreted. You have the probabilist school and the probabil probabilist like school. And no, 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 no. You can't, you cannot shut me down on this. So you have two different schools that are the main ones, the probabilist and the probabilorists. You're allowed to uh, function within either school without sin. So you can take the more common opinion. You can also take the less common opinion without sin as long as it's common teaching. That's how these things work before there's definitions. That's how they work. Um, that's how the church has always functioned. The, okay. Um, it, 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 hey, okay. You can have piles and piles of theologians saying all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it only matters what the church says. That's right. And um, no one has ever said, can, no one has, there, there is no official church interpretation of number 59. 
and oh. Pius, Pius the Tenth, and Leo the Thirteenth, and Pius the Eleventh, and Benedict the Fifteenth, all prisoners in the Vatican with nothing to do but police their own offices, didn't bother to correct them when they knew that this is what they were putting out. No, the listen that you, you know the nobody had NFP on their brain as far as licit Catholic stuff till 1951. It's, yeah, that, it's just not true. People is. were using rhythm up the wall. That's why it was mentioned. But in, I know it was. It was. They were. They were using it, but they were putting a secondary purpose ahead of the primary, and that's why he says you can't do that. But all of the moral theology manuals said it was okay, and all of the popes in question knew that that's what was happening. It was being taught in seminaries in Rome. It, it was being taught by. No, uh, it was not. Ford. Okay. Um, those are the two that occurred. All right. Me. So. So. All right. There's okay. More. Let's look at a question or two, and I guess we'll have sure. to call it a night because I because like a lot of things, when trying to deal with something precise in conversation, you, you, it just gets batted around a lot. Yeah, and unfortunately, I've been a little jumbly with the quotes, uh, and it's it's not really easy. Good. This is why Facebook is good, but I I do want to. Sure. I'm going to come back in a second. All right, hang on Please. a second. Let's, do you want to you? Do not want a conception or the only purpose of having a carcinogen. I guess he said, whatever. Um, are you saying, John, there are times you can use artificial contraception to avoid marital infidelity? You can use it. Um, no, there is not, but you, the innocent spouse can reluctantly allow the guilty spouse to use contraception, but you've got to talk them out of it that's what it says in casti 59 that is correct yes that is what it says without question um indulgence beyond what suffices for generating offspring such chastity to menstruation nor has a new low okay um yeah lisa baby she goes on out she loves saint augustine yeah and, and and i know that on this you and i are on the same page uh we do not agree with lisa on this as far as I'm aware, yeah, you're not the main thing, all this stuff about no, no, after menopause. And... Right. That's that's just categorically false. I know. I, I, you so have to you go with you. church teaching. You have to go with church teaching. So let me let's let's wrap up. But I, I am going to implore or ask you to not. To not if I if I ask a pointed question that's short and I'm not repeating my questions over and over, I don't ask you the same question over and over and over if you've answered it. So I'm going to just ask you in Facebook, if I ask you a question, to not to answer it instead of begging out. And I know you don't, you think I'm accusing you of something and you say I've already answered it. I'm like, no, if I ask you a question, it's because you haven't answered it. And if you do answer it, make it obvious. Don't say, check my other stuff. I already answered that answer the question because I do six or seven times and no, I wouldn't ask it a question if answer. you answered it six or seven times that's stupid I'd ask it once and you would answer it but I again what I'm saying here is in conversation it's easy to do whack-a-mole on Facebook it's more difficult which is why people block or run away and I'm accusing you of running away and I know you disagree so I'm going to ask you when I bring some of this up to not to, to just, you know, to go ahead and answer the direct question because there, because you cannot escape my conclusion because I'll paint you into a corner and there's nothing else you can say, but in conversation, you can't be painted into a corner. I, I'm very glad that you used my and all the first person terminology here because that's been your mode of argumentation all evening. It's all about the way you're going to see something. All I've done is provide- Look in the mirror. Texts. No, no, all I've done is direct quote magisterium. That's it. All I've done all is I've read Cassie Kenubi, that's it. See? And I and I explicitly quoted something that from Rome oh, okay. that denied your interpretation. This is why, this is why if it's done on Facebook, you can cut through all the noise very easily. But you have, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to not to not beg off. And then there was the other guy on Facebook too who said, Well, we'll just I'll just we'll just watch you in the debate. It's like John, John, but I'm not running off. 
I, I quoted, you're saying that Kasti Kanubi means one thing. I'm ex quoting Pius XI's Apostolic Penitentiary telling you it means something else. Okay. I I know you think that, but it, it doesn't. They're referring, it, it, it's, there's no contradiction with Cassidy 59 on the stuff you're saying. It's about avoiding sin, and that's exactly what Cardinal Hayes said. But it, the bottom line is, it's procreation's number one, or you don't do the act. And nowadays, we have ways of rigging it, which is why they don't mention primary and secondary anymore. There's a reason, and it's because it gets in the way. John, 19, uh, 1930, the Cassidy Canubi was written. In 1934, this question was posed. Whether the practice is licit in itself by which spouses who for just and grave cause wish to avoid offspring in a morally upright way uh, abstain from the use of marriage by mutual consent with upright motives, except on those days when, according to certain medical theories, conception is impossible. Response by the Apostolic Penitentiary in uh, 1938, after Casti Canubi, they said, response provided for by the response of the Sacred Penitentiary of June 16th, 1880. They knew that this question was about avoiding a baby, and they referred back to a previous response that explicitly allowed they, are, they said they said it's already been answered it was it's right the the answer that would had already been given was that it was allowed it was permitted the the idea of ex, of avoiding the fertile window was explicitly permitted and then the magisterium referenced and said why are you asking us again we already told you it was okay not to mention, as a matter of fact, it was so common knowledge, they didn't even bother to restate it. They said, already answered. I, I love the way you worded that. Already answered. Don't ask us again. Um, and it was already in the, it was already in all the moral theology manuals this way, and it had been for decades. Uh, I, I mean, and, and you can't, you know, this is not 2021. The Pope wasn't busy in Poland or in Africa. He was sitting in the apostolic palace with nothing else to do. He knew what was coming out in all of these different texts, and he approved them all. Uh, I, I mean, so again, we're talking about a grave dereliction of duty here, which is possible. Popes are not. Um, just, popes are not, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Just they're like. Not, they're not impeccable. Um, you know, what's going on here is if you, yeah, if you talk, to, if you talk to the popes 200 years ago or what, or hundred years ago about evolution, they'll all say no way. And if you talk to popes about evolution today, they'll say it's okay. That, uh, that, it's, that's a different conversation. I'm and saying and though that, that you can, you can whisper the word no, or you can yell the word no from the top of the roof on, on the, so the, so they, they were subtle in how they dealt with it, but they basically said the way it's always been. Now, if here's a question though, you you mentioned this dubia that was presented in 1933 or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah something like that. All, All of a right. sudden, we can't find the All date. Right. So, so if there was if there agree. was universal agreement mm -hmm. and no confusion about mm -hmm. how NFP was licit, mm -hmm. why would the dubia even be used in 1933? I couldn't agree with you more. That's why they responded and didn't answer. They just said, wait, Look wait, why would anyone even write the dubium? Rome had the same thought, which is why they responded back and said, go. No, look no, no. Why would years. anyone bother yeah. writing it? If everyone, if there's, if there's, if there's universal agreement and zero mm -hmm. controversy mm -hmm. through the history of NFP, mm -hmm. why would anyone even make a dubium in the first place? Well, sure. People ask dumb questions all the time because they're not well formed. You have bishops that have, you know. So the people who made the dubium, it was yeah. dumb for them to do it. That's you know your many, answer. You know how many times I've seen a bishop in a confirmation sermon say he can't tell you the gifts of the Holy Ghost? That happens all the time. You know, so yeah. dumb questions. I, no, I'm never the response somebody being smart. I, I'm never going to bet on somebody knowing the, the answer. The, re no. the response originally from the 1800s or whatever was. It's to prevent onanism. It's not to prevent a baby. No, the question was asked in the context of preventing a pregnancy. Right. And then, listen, please. But then they said, for just and grave reasons. That's right. The just and grave reasons must include avoiding sin. 
No, it does not say that. Yes, it does. And that's anytime, what it says. Yes, anytime you. Justin Grave has come up ever, it mm -hmm. always includes financial, emotional. Oh, okay. Um, all, all right. So, considered. So, medical. okay. It'll, so, th there's been little accomplished on our debate except the kind of like playing checkers you just move here and the person moves there and the person moves back and the person moves here and it's like that and this is why it's it can be difficult um not in writing so i'm looking forward to you sticking you know you sticking with the with the theme if i've tried to try to nail it down on facebook instead of just going away because because as you'll notice i'm I basically get the last word in every Facebook conversation. Have you noticed that? Well, sure. You should get the last word. That's that's the goal. You get the last word. You're the one who I want you to make me speechless. I want you to ask me a question that I cannot answer. That's what I want you to do. And my question to you would be, I have the question ready. The question would be. Uh, don't, please don't ask it. Just ask it on Facebook. I think. But I want you to go to bed thinking about it because okay. the question is why do we ignore decades worth of pre Pius the Twelfth clear moral theology on this point? I, I mean, that's the that's the whole crux of the matter. It's not up to me. It's not up to you. We're not Protestants. We we both concede that. We don't. Okay, we're, because we, we both think he's talking about something different. Yes, but I have all of the divine standing with me, and you don't have any. You're asserting that. You're, can, can, you, so can, can you give us one? I've asked you. I'm, I'm you telling you, man. I'm Okay. Casti Canubi is the summation of everything you're quoting. Okay. So you have now, no... Casti Canubi does no. not say that people can make use of infertile periods to avoid babies. If they, It says they can reluctantly do so, which would be known as a perversion of the right order. Okay, and I know that that's what you're saying, and I've asked you to provide one person with teaching authority in the name of the church who supports that that's what you're saying, and you can't do it. I can. There, if you look at the history of this topic in the in the world, in the country, th this was all, everyone basically said what this is. It's a, it's a perversion of the right order. And then there's the one thing, there's the Cardinal Hayes guy who's basically echoed what everyone was saying. He's not a moral theologian. Go ahead. Um, but he's he when he said what he said, everyone went with it because he was. That's what the teaching was. Nobody went with it. He was in the utter extreme minority. There wasn't a single. You're, moral you're just theologian. you're pulling that out of your hat. Uh, you don't know that. Oh, okay. I'm. I do actually because I spent some time researching this. So I'm going to drop it into the comment section. Either I don't know how this uh, file that we're doing. Fine. fine. I don't know if this is saved or okay. Facebook. I don't know the appropriate medium, but I am going to drop them in because I do know it for a fact. Don't. Yes. Yes. So NFP is simply NFP is simply using marriage for the for not for the primary purpose. And that's why it's intrinsically wrong. And it's a perversion of the right order. If it's intrinsically wrong, it's never allowed. It, OK, if it it is because of the the marriage contract contraception is intrinsically long is intrinsically wrong and it's allowed in 59 isn't it contraception is allowed in 59 oh oh i i see what you mean no you're, you're not allowing the innocent spouse to contracept and you're not even allowing the the other spouse to contracept they're going to it says reluctantly allowed you can reluctantly oh, oh, allow contraception yeah. All it was addressing was the moral situation for the innocent person. Yes, right. you can innocent reluctantly, person allow can reluctantly allow contraception. You can reluctantly allow yourself to be sinned against. Yes, in the same way that you can reluctantly allow a rapist to rape you. This is this is a very important distinction. Those people are not guilty of any crime. You they can were reluctantly raped. allow the perversion of the right order, and it's obvious. If you're making what's secondary into what's primary, that's a perversion of the right order. You're putting number two ahead of number one. Obvious. And that's whatever. This is why I'm telling you, uh, your, your average illiterate farmer can catch that. It's This is how where babies come from. If you're not going to make a baby, don't do it.
Really? Yeah, and, I'm, and I'm telling you that that's not how the Catholic world has ever operated, uh, nor the Old Testament. Uh, that's just never how it's ever, ever, ever been. Oh, okay. Ever. So, so in order, so I can, I can, I could, I could get you. Logic can bring this to the fore, but you have to be able to do it, and it takes time. And um, so I, I'll, I'll look forward to asking you some questions on Facebook, and then having you not just, um, uh, you know, just having you sticking with it, because I think you'll have to admit that you're wrong if you answer the questions that I ask you. But I'm going to do it on Facebook instead. Okay, so I'm going to uh, just recap here. I'm going to provide you with the quotes that back up what I'm saying crystal clearly with text. You can refer to them as often as you want. I don't have to stumble through it. Uh, I will get those quotes. I'd ask you to get just one. So I'm going to go get you dozens. You get me one. That seems like a pretty good, uh, pretty good deal. Anyone can get lots of quotes, but what? No, 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 no. You cannot. No, you see, right now you're retreating because you've said that I'm arbitrarily asserting and you're not. And so I'm telling you, I want one source that makes it not your words, but someone else's. One, and I'll give you dozens. You none of this comes from me. There's, there's, yes, there's nobody who. NFP did not exist before 1951. You had rhythm method. NFP, method. dude, they never, because NFP as it's currently practiced, meaning two people saying we can pursue NFP to avoid a baby. That notion did not exist before 1951. It was explicitly referenced by the penitentiary twice in the 1900s. That's what I'm saying the grave cause was to avoid sin before 1951 the grave cause was to avoid baby after 1951 it explicitly the- says to avoid baby in 1853 and 1880 the question was about avoiding a baby that was and the, the detestable and the detestable sin of onanism whereas you didn't need to just avoid the detestable sin of onanism with pius the 12th he got rid of that so nfp became uh, became a legitimate deal before it was only to avoid the sin of onanism, but now you don't even have to worry about that. It's just to avoid a baby. Okay, so that is a that is a unique distinction that if you made it before, I apologize. I, I didn't quite catch that that was your distinction. I will address that in text. Um, yeah, I, I can't do that on the fly, but I will address that in text. All right, so you and, ended and up talking clear, a lot longer clear. than you were supposed to, man. I thought this is yes. your... You're just to be clear, time. I'm still here because I don't run away. So well, uh, I know I, I, don't. I don't. Just, just like a husband can never win an argument with his wife, um, in 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 this forum of talking, it you can you can jump around and stuff like that. But but I think Facebook is really good for thorny, contested issues that need to be that need to be clearly stated. Yes, and when I source at length, you don't want to read it. Um, um, that's happened. I, I, can, you know, I can read stuff, but again, it's if you give me uh, five or nine hundred paragraphs, it's it's it just I just need the obvious. So I will ask you a point blank question, mm-hmm. and you and you just say whatever. I'm I'm going to ask you to. To, to to um to not to not I want you to get the last word so let's uh, let's hang up shall we all right good yeah. talking to you. all right thank you Mike you bet have a good Adios. one Cheers. bye.